and uh, because I have um, the main camera spotlighted, I really can't see everyone's face at once. But it's nice to see you all that are here. As Chef Dan told you already, him and I are going to do some pasta dishes. You know, pasta is an interesting thing. It's uh, very popular today. There are restaurants uh, sell just pasta. You know, back in the 80s and 90s, there was a trend to have restaurants that literally did take out pasta on the spot. That kind of faded away. People realized they could boil their own water. <laughs> and and, and I, I imagine, uh, I don't know what those were. You know, there was a place in town called Spaghetti Warehouse. Anybody remember that? Oh, yeah. It was up on Fairmont, right? Or Spring Garden. Spring Garden, yeah, very large place. It was, uh, it's now a it's now a concert hall or something. So I I guess yeah. So it was a very popular thing. But pasta is cool, and from a restaurateur standpoint, it's very cool. Because anybody have any idea how much it costs to make a, a pound of pasta? Got a guess? You say how many? How much? How much? Oh, sorry, I couldn't hear you. What you say about the pasta? I said, anybody have a guess about how much it costs to make a pound of pasta? $2. Two, yeah, like $1.75. You're, you're, you're full of bananas there, but you, you know, I got to come to dough. Recognize that. But you only <laughs> need flour, egg. There's no tax on dough, right? There's no tax on dough. You just got overpaid labor. Okay, like three seventy five. dollars Anyway, before we start, I have to take attendance. So, Jay, are you here? TikTok. Going to use that one first. John? No, I'm here, Chef. Oh, I was about to say I should skip the J's all together. <laughs> oh, dang. Ouch. Uh, I wasn't was first J. Devon? I know you're here, right? I'm here. Yeah. That's good. Stay here, buddy. Don't fade away. No, I got it. That, that lobster gave its life for you. Oh. You need to stay well long enough for it to pass through your system. Kiara? Didn't I see Kiara? Uh, I don't see her. Uh -oh. Kareem? Oh, goodness. Nope. Thanks a lot. How about Christian? How you doing there, Christian? I'm here. I know. No, man. <laughs> I don't think you missed a class yet in my book. I, I mean, I can't, I can't miss no classes, man. I don't blame you. That's what I talked about, paying attention to today, so you can have a tomorrow. Yes, sir. Sean? Sean? Sean's usually here, but I don't see him. Sasha's there, though. Of all people. <laughs> I'm getting to Sasha next. How you doing, Sasha? I'm good, Sean. How are you? All right. And then I got Patricia. I know you're here somewhere. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And Chardé, you here? Yep, I see her. Yeah, I'm here. Okay, cool. Nice to see you. That's everybody. That's, that's everybody. And so we're about to get started. We're going to start, like I said, um, Chef Dan is going to make um, regular traditional pasta. Although, wait, I, I'm going to tell you it's not real traditional. But he's going to make a traditional pasta with egg. And um, and I am, he's hoping to make some gnocchi also. Which is a dumpling, but it's counted as a pasta. And while his stuff is resting, whether I finish or not, I wanted to show you how um, you make perceivably healthy pastas by using vegetables as the wet ingredient. That, that's our, our plan today. So, um, with that, I'll let Chef Dan start. Does anybody know what pasta means? The word? What it is? Come on, speak up. Don't be scared. What, you said, what it means? Pasta? I say yeah. Italian cuisine. It means no, right? No, it's actually a Latin word. And in Latin, oh. it, in Latin it means dough or pastry. And, oh. in, and in Italian, it means paste. Literally, paste. So um, it's a very simple, only a few ingredients. It's been complicated 
in America. <laughs> but traditionally, it was flour and water, some seasoning, salt and pepper, a little bit of oil. Anyway, Jeff Dan's going to start. And then while that's happening, my carrots, which I had to blanch, are cooling. Good morning, everyone. I'm Chef Donato Leone. You guys know me as Chef Dan. Yeah, no. Um, we did attendance already, which is good. I'm going to go over a couple things before we start making our pasta. There's traditional ways that you could look up on YouTube or anywhere, basically, and see your well in the center of the, the counter with your eggs in the middle and it slowly turned from the outside in. That's the traditional way. So Chef Joe came up with a beautiful, beautiful uh, <clears throat> way of doing it, doing pasta. Saves a lot of time and a lot of work. And I think it's a, a great way. I never thought it would work. I never did. I told him this isn't going to work. And he said, have faith. Seven years later, I still have faith. Okay. Um, basically, it's flour, egg, salt, pepper. I mean, no pepper, salt and olive oil. All right. And uh, you mix them together and it forms a pasty dough, which you have to let rest to let the gluten form. And then you cut your different shapes. We're going to make a few different shapes. We're going to be making a, a fettuccine, and which is a long pasta, a long, wide pasta. Uh, a parpadelle, which is a, a shorter, wider pasta. Some restaurants or people make them longer. Uh, I prefer them shorter because if they're longer, you're going to have a big bunch on your fork. So if it's a little shorter, it's not that hard to control while you're eating it. Um, maybe a linguine or a, a capellini. Bow ties, in Italian it's farfalle. Uh, tortellini is a stuffed pasta. We're going to stuff it with a mascarpone parmesan stuffing. And um, Jeff Joe's going to make some carrot pasta. Now, as far as other pastas go, the uh, carrot, spinach, tomato. Basically what it is, is whatever liquid you add to your pasta, whether it be egg or, or water or however you make your pasta, you, d you <clears throat> take a little bit of the water away and then you would add like your spinach puree or your carrot puree or whatever flavoring your beet puree and it'll make, it'll make a nice red color. Now with the, the beet puree, uh, you gotta add something a little more to give it a little more kick to make it a little redder. A lot of people add harissa. It's a, 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 a mixture of spices. It's, it's, it's a, I guess it would be Middle Eastern. It's my guess. All right, um, so I'm gonna start this. I'm gonna do our basic egg pasta. I'm gonna make up, it's about a little more pound, pound and a half brick. Basically, it weighs about a pound and a half. Uh, we're going to start out with a pound of flour in our food processor. I already weighed this out to make it a little easier on you guys, on you students watching. All right. It's a uh, teaspoon of salt. Okay. Now I'm going to pulse it. I'm going to put it in my processor. And I'm just pulsing it. Just so the salt and the flour mix real well. All right. Now, um, we use five eggs. Four eggs makes it a little too dry to work with. So five eggs makes it, uh, it makes it workable. You could stretch it, you could make your, uh, you could fold it, bend it, make your different stuffed pastas, lasagna, noodles, uh, a tortellini, ravioli, angeloni. There's so many, so many pastas you can make out of this one style that we're making right here. All right, so it's um, five eggs and it's uh, a teaspoon of olive oil. Tablespoon, tablespoon of olive oil, I'm sorry. So I just added in with the eggs, makes it a little easier for me. All right, so now you can turn your processor on. Before I do this, let me explain the process. You slowly add the eggs. You want them to slowly incorporate into, into, the, into the flour to make your dough.
Give it another little turn. Okay. So now if you would, I don't if you look in here, it looks very mealy. Very loose. But if you squeeze it together, it sticks. Right there. So now I'm going to put it onto our table and I'm going to work it a little bit. I try to get every last little bit that's in here, that's in our bowl. Okay, so if you see, it looks very crumbly. It's not mixed at all, right? So we're gonna slowly start mixing it together and try to put it together. Now listen, if it's a little too dry, you could add a couple tablespoons of water. We might have to do that. But right now it looks pretty good. As we mix it and knead it a little, the gluten will start to form. to get all these all that crumble in there now if you have a little bit of this crumble left over you could add it into your next batch I'm mixing it in. I'm making like a brick out of it. And I shape it like that for a reason. I shape it into a brick so when we cut we get equal portions out of it. And if you see, if you look at it, it looks like a regular brick. How's that, better? Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap it in plastic wrap and let it, let the gluten form, let it all come together real nice. Give me one second. Now you don't have to wrap it a hundred times and go around and around. You want it to just make a brick, just like this. Now the reason I make it like this, I told you, equal portion. So this is gonna sit. Now you can put it in the refrigerator and let it uh, firm up in the fridge for any extended length of time and I might put it in there for about 15 minutes or till we get to it. But a half hour to an hour would be perfect. So I'm going to put it in the fridge. The chef made that uh, pasta. He used um, how much flour? Anybody remember? It was one pound of flour. I oh, I'm sorry. Knew. I thought he was asking me. I thought chef was asking me. Oh, <laughs> well, there you go. That was a giveaway. <laughs> And, and so, and and um, so one pound, sixteen ounces, right? And how many eggs did you? Use? Four, five, 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 five eight. Eight. Uh, or or five. And, and and another trick question: about how many ounces in an egg? One point two. Oh. Ah. Wrong. Wrong. Uh, wrong. Two. <laughs> I did not hear. 
So, so we're assuming he used about 10 ounces of liquid, then, right? Yeah. Plus a teaspoon or a tablespoon of oil. A tablespoon of tablespoon. olive oil. So all together, we have about um, 12 ounces of liquid. Everyone agree it's close to 12 ounces? And grenades, horseshoes, and pasta? Yes. So anyway, the only reason I brought that up is a good rule of thumb for, and a segue into what I might be doing later, is that any liquid would work. And, okay. and in fact, for every 10 ounces or so of flour, you need to have about six ounces of a liquid. The chef used egg yolks, but if egg yolks are in all pasta, why is some pasta in the supermarket, some of them are egg pasta or egg noodles? But not at all, all pasta is made out of egg yolks, right? Right. Not all pasta has eggs in it. It's any liquid and a little bit of fat, any fat. Also, so another thing I want to butter? bring up before we move on is um, there's a lot of semolina pastas also. Now, uh, if we were going to make our pasta that we just made uh, again, and you wanted to use semolina, my rule of thumb is about 60-40. 60% flour, 40% semolina. You could go 100% semolina, but it's a, real, it's a real tough job. It's a, real, it's a little tougher to do. I like the flour, makes the gluten, bring, brings it together, and it makes it hold up better. So you could go maybe 50-50, but you could also add semolina into your pasta and have a semolina pasta and you could add water to hold it together and uh, you would have a, a nice semolina pasta. Did we add semolina in the last pasta we made with you chef Dan? No, right? We often blend it. In, in our kitchen, in your labs, we don't often use semolina because the American version of semolina isn't ground fine enough to use straight up. Mm -hmm. And it makes it a little, it makes your pasta a little gritty. Right. And so then, I was going to ask, yeah. And we would have to purchase just for the pasta making the double zero. You've seen that? Double mm -hmm. zero? Um, mm -hmm. And it's, to be honest with you, you are a customer, but no one but us are eating what we make. So, <laughs> we Wait, if you put it on the zero zero, then it's going to be really flat, right? Like when no, we it's rolling gonna be, it out. It's gonna be it's going to be finer. Our semolina, it's, our semolina is um, like grits. To, it's well, it's not that thick. No, that's the cornmeal, right? So it's thinner than cornmeal, but it's nowhere near. It feels like sand. That's a good description. It feels like sand in my fingers, where regular flour feels kind of like powder. It, it's so fine. Okay. You know what I mean? So so it Italian, gives it that grainy texture. Right. So there is a semolina you can buy, and it's the double zero. It means it's ground and ground and ground and ground. Right. So basically, this would be considered fine. Right. But okay. you would need extra fine for your pasta okay. to do it the right way. So no matter how you no matter how you roll it out, it still would have that grainy. Idea. Yeah, it would, it would have a little grainy consistent. texture to it. If you want to make 100% semolina pasta, you need to use the extra fine or the double zero. You can't use the so would it be more flour. healthier to eat the semolina flour or the whole wheat flour? It's um, all wheat of a different color. It's yeah, it's it's fifty percent of one thing and fifty percent of another. It all depends on what your preference is. It's not semolina is not necessarily healthier than than white yeah, flour. Yeah. It hasn't been bleached. So if, you know, if you're anti chemicals, that might be a difference. Mm -hmm. It's not really that. So anyway, I wanted to let you, I wanted, to, I wanted you guys to note and keep in your head, save forever, because you can use this in a pinch, that 10 ounces of flour and 6 ounces of any liquid will turn out a pasta for you. You don't need eggs. And you don't need machines either, right? So if you're stuck in a kitchen, some, I mean, there's been so many times in my life things have gone so wrong and we had to do things on the fly come up with new ideas to solve a problem before a customer knew there was a problem. And th simple things like adding a, a pasta garnish to a dish or a, um, you know, a baked dough thing to a dish as a garnish. Uh, it's a lifesaver. So, so 10 ounces of flour, which is about two cups, 
to about six ounces of water or any liquid. All right. Okay, for our, our next our next pasta is going to be gnocchi. Gnocchi is a potato product, potato flour, uh, water, egg, salt, a little bit of olive oil, and it's mixed together. Uh, we're not going to be making a whole lot of this. This could really get into a lot of work if you uh, if you start doing it. All right, so uh, I took about a half a pound of uh, a half a pound of all-purpose flour. I'm going to put it down on our table. Now I probably could use the um, the food processor for this, but I I don't want it to get too gummy or too uh, too tough. So I'm going to just open this up. Now I'm not going to make a well yet. Now I'm going to add my potato. So this is a regular potato. It's peeled, cut in cubes, and just boiled till it's cooked all the way through. Okay, and I didn't put it through, a, you could use a ricer to put it through a ricer or a strainer with a spoon. I used a spatula against the side of a bowl to, to more or less break it down into, not a puree, but into a, a mashed potato, basically. There's nothing else in here. All right, so I'm going to take probably about... I'm shooting, this is about a half a pound, so I'm shooting for, it should be equal parts, about half a pound, but I'm gonna go a little lighter. I'm gonna go about six ounces, all right? All right, now, once you, once you do this, try to do it with your potato warm. You don't wanna do it cold, because it tightens up, it don't, it don't, uh, don't have any, any gift to it. You lose all your starch once it's cold. So these are warm. I just did these a little while ago in the main kitchen. All right, so now I'm gonna start mixing it together. Now, I'm just holding it in and trying to get it all the way through our potato. Now listen, I could always add more if I don't think it's enough which I don't, I'm gonna add some more. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. Probably about a half a teaspoon. Now I'll go to a whole teaspoon because now it's about a pound of our mixture, right? It's our potatoes, about a half a pound of potatoes and about a half a pound of flour. So start, I'm gonna slowly mix it together. It's probably gonna need a little more moisture to it. You could use an egg in this if you wanted to. If you can look at it, it's starting to form. Chef Dan, change the angle of your camera. We can't see what you're doing with your hands, brother. Move it back more? Okay. No, Is just tilt it down so you, yeah, because you can't see what you're doing. My hands are. Yeah, it looks better. I know, they're dirty. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to need this a little bit, and I'll show you the, the finished product. And whenever you make pasta, in gnocchi, there's also another type of in gnocchi, well, it's called a cavatelli, and that has a cheese, uh, a cheese mixture. Instead of potato, it would be where it got the cheese. So you can see it wasn't really that wet. 
We didn't need a lot of flour, but you could sprinkle your board. And you just lower that down a little at the top, real easy, real easy, push it down a little more. Good. All right, can you guys see now a little better? Yes, sir. All right, you don't want to overwork this either. Now, these, these are a heavy pasta. And now, this, this here you can, uh, you don't run this through a machine or anything, you, you do this by hand. And again, I made my little brick because that's the shape I like, I guess. I don't know. I'm used to having bricks around. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to let this sit a minute. I'm going to cover it. I noticed Chef talked about possibly putting egg in his gnocchi also. But you can because if it amounts to liquid and fat. I also noticed he told you you can store the pasta he made earlier in the refrigerator for really an extended period of time. But anything longer than a day with the egg in it, it's a problem. I said an hour. No, no, I wasn't contradicting. I just didn't want them thinking you can you put can it, make it, it, you can make egg pasta and put it in the refrigerator and keep it there for a week. It'll happen, it'll turn black. Yeah, it, it instantly, by, by the next day, it looks kind of grayish, greenish. It's kind of interesting. It's almost a fun science experiment. <laughs> okay. But so, you, can, you, can, you can leave refrigerated pasta without the egg. All right, so now uh, we have that part done. Our gnocchi's mixed. I'm going to put this down right there. So our gnocchi's mixed, sitting here. It's nice and warm. I would I would like to wait a minute before we do anything else with it. Um, these are easy to shape and cut. These are little boards you could buy at Fonte's or any online Amazon. I'm sure anywhere you could get these boards. It's a wooden board and it has lines in it. Now you necessarily don't need it. You could use a fork also, and I will show you that also. Uh, and how to, what you do is we cut them to the size that we want. We uh, roll it out in a, um, we roll it out into a, uh, a rope. We cut the size we want, and then we slide it down here or down our fork. And I'm going to show you both. But before I do that, once we put them together, if, if your pasta is a little damp or a little wet, you don't want them to stick. So we use a little semolina on the pan for our pasta. So I have a half a sheet pan here. I put maybe two tablespoons of semolina on it. If you have to have more, you can. All right, so now I, we have our gnocchi here. I'm bringing it over. Can you guys see it a little better? We have this other. All right. So I'm putting a little flour down on my deck and where I'm gonna hold the pasta. I cut it small enough so it's easy to work with. All right, and I'm gonna cover it back up. So maybe two ounces, three ounces is the piece. And now I'm gonna roll it into a thin rope. Now sometimes too much flour will make your pasta slide. So you gotta be very careful about that. You want your rope to be probably a quarter inch around half, no more than a half an inch. Okay, and that's one of our ropes. I'm gonna do one more. Believe it or not, growing up, these were one of my all-time favorites. 
There's a lot of different sauces you could use with these. You could use a basic tomato sauce. You could build off of that. You could add uh, risotto, sliced risotto. You could add uh, ground meat, a bolognese sauce. There's so many things you could do it, or you could do it with oil and garlic. I wouldn't recommend seafood though, because these are really heavy. All right, so now we have our two ropes. Our next, our next, uh, next part of our demo here, we have our two ropes. I'm gonna bring our rope over and I'm gonna cut them to the size I want. I usually cut them about the size of my thumbnail. I, I measure it and I cut it. Some places call these pasta pillows, but that's not true. All right, so now you see the way they look. They do look like little pillows. All right, so now we have our, our, our roller. Just put your hand on it and roll it down. And it makes little lines in it. I don't know if you guys will be able to see it. And the more pressure you put, the longer it'll get. Okay, that's, how, that's what happens with these. Now, if you were using the fork, it would be the same thing. Got out of dough with the fork, huh? I usually use the fork on the pill. I don't put the pill on it. Oh, what do you just go like that? Right. I always did it the other way. Like that. Now, this would be the fork. You just roll it like that. I can't do it this way, huh? It's okay. It's been it's been made better. Anyway, I like to roll them down our, our little board here, and they come out beautiful. Okay. The, the ridges in the pasta serve the purpose of trapping small amounts of the sauce. I don't know if you guys could see the ridges in it. So we get them up here. Can you see? You can yeah. see them. Yeah. So they're, they're very small ridges, but they, they serve the purpose. That's why some pasta, if, if you're if you're buying even dry pasta, the dry pasta that has ridges in it um, will taste better when you eat it. <laughs> Since the thinner sauces can get trapped in the, and held onto the pasta. A really slick pasta like you use for um, like elbow macaroni, mm, it's very hard to get sauce up in your mouth with the pasta. All right, so I'm just going to do this a little bit here, and then we'll move on to our next pasta. And you can see it don't take long to do these. That was a half a pound of flour and basically two potatoes, a little bit of salt. Here, I got another question. You would sell four ounces of these maybe for an order. That's probably an order and a half sitting right there. We have a pound and a half, maybe a pound and a half of pasta here, of gnocchi. It cost us basically nothing to make, a half a pound of flour and two potatoes. And your time. So that's always a factor in there. Okay. As a nice variation, as an interesting variation, depending on what you're going with, it, assuming you aren't um, cooking tomato sauce. And there's, um, there's a dish where the gnocchi is made with sweet potato. Yes. And, and so it's actually a sweet potato dumpling, if you will, called a gnocchi, and served with a brown butter and sugar sauce. So it's like a candied sweet potato on your plate. It's great with the royal pork top and things like that, you know, now instead of a potato. Now, I also did that with spinach and brown butter. And a little nutmeg, it was a winner. I couldn't keep them in my restaurant. They sold. I used to make them as a special around the holidays, Thanksgiving. Yeah, I remember. Right around there. So any starch, again, back to the beginning of how simple pasta is. A potato is a starch. It's the flour. In your recipe. Any starch might work. Sweet potatoes have very little starch. They need a little bit of the addition of flour all, often. It's usually very hard to make one straight from sweet potatoes. But if you get it done, it makes a perfect 
side for uh, a grilled grilled dinner, especially. I mean, anybody who's had candy sweet potatoes every once in a while craves that that caramelized sugar flavor, right? All right, so now we're going to move on to our brick of pasta, the uh, egg pasta, okay? All right, so we have it right there. Now, you don't want to throw your plastic out because you're going to need it to keep it to keep it um, covered so it don't dry out. This will dry out very fast. All right, so now we want to portion this. Now, whenever you want to portion something and cut it in equal portions, you always, always cut in half. So when you think about it, everything goes in half. So you're going to go down the middle. Okay, our, our pasta is cut in half, right? Then we're going to go in half again. All right, now we have four cups. Now we're going to cut these halves in half. Okay, so that's basically eight orders. And we could do a lot of different things with this. So I'm going to uh, take two out, cover this and put it to the side. And now I'm gonna try to use <laughs> Chef, Joe's, Chef Joe's KitchenAid. All right, so you press it down a little. And you, you don't wanna start putting in the KitchenAid from here. It's too thick. What'll happen is it'll just rip up, it'll tear up. So you use your, your rolling pin, just put a little flour on it, and you just roll it out. Now, the whole trick to making fresh pasta is you want it to be the length of your roller, okay? So this way, everything you cut will be the same measurement. So for instance, I put this sort of low speed, I'm pretty much the length of the machine. So it's gonna come through real nice. And I do a couple of times on each number. Okay. So that was number seven. All right. I was going to do the fat first, or a pork pork and dough, whatever's easiest. I usually do my fat and cheese. Okay. All right. What is it? Yeah, I know. It's Chef. Meet my roller. Chef's meeting my roller. You guys. This is for the first time. <laughs> now it's a little tacky, so I'm just going to put a tad. The flour on it. Kind of cool how that powder turned into a sheet, though, huh? As you can see, it's the length of the machine. So this way you will get even cuts. One more. Don't you usually fold up the ends to try to get a perfect square as well? Uh, yeah, it? that's that's something I do. It's because to me it's very hard to keep feeding that in. <laughs> no, 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 not not doing that. So it keeps rolling through the machine all at once. I mean, right. when it's not the square shape, I remember doing it in class. You told us how, yep. how to fold up. Right. So after the first roll, we often fold in the edges and make well, them. have to. Right. right. Yeah. You can do that. And it gives a nice square piece. And, you know, if you were, especially if you were, um, you know, there's so many restaurants have um, action stations where people are seeing the things. So you'd want the sheets to look square all around, not just in the front or the back. So the edges are important too. You're right. And adding that fold would give you smooth edges. So, all right, if I wanted to fold it, I would just go over, go back a couple, a couple notches to make the, the um, die a little wider. There you go. Uh, 
Jeff Dan, did you miss the squeak, 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 squeak? Oh my it, God. It, it may, <laughs> it may, don't get excited. It may squeak. <laughs> Yeah, I'm used to using the handheld ones. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go up to number three, right, Chef? It's up to you. Three or four. For, for my fettuccine, some people like, you know, um, if you buy those Pennsylvania Dutch egg noodles and if you're doing a soup kind of thing, if you stopped at four, your noodle might be a little chewy in the soup, you know? Um, at three, it's finer and a little more um, softer, dainty, sharper to the bite. So. so we're just going to roll this out. And then we're going to just, I'm going to do a couple of them, put them on the side. Then we're going to do some cuts. We're going to do the fettuccine, I mean the uh, parfait. Or folly. Or Fidel. Say one more. While Chef's doing that, I'm going to prep my uh, vegetables for the pasta I will be making. So I will be using fresh carrots, and so they'll be boiled or blanched. What type of uh, vegetables is going with the uh, pasta? Uh, with, with the PC as far away as it is for this demo and the machine running, it's hard for me to hear anything you said. So tell me again. I said what type of, like, what are you doing with the vegetables? Well, I'm, I, I, I was going to, um, I'll tell you more, but I'm going to make a carrot pasta today. And okay. then there's a lot of information you got to have because I know, I know you can lie and to lie all you want, but if somebody served you a spinach pasta or a carrot pasta, you just turned your nose up at it a half dozen times. No, <laughs> not I. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> not you, not Santino. <laughs> I'll try. I'll try it. You gotta at least try it. Yeah. And you know you have to try everything today. The only part of my speech of what I'm making it, but the fact of the matter is, it, it hardly has, it has you. I would defy you, and when we get together next week or the week after, I would defy you to be able to tell the difference with your eyes. Uh, that's that quiet. Uh -huh. Wait, who's getting together? I'm rolling my second piece through. You want me to move over? No, I can do it. You want to go on the cut? Oh, you need to cut. Well, I was going to do a couple and then do all the cuts. Or would you want me to do one at a time? You can destroy it, but you need the machine, right? Yeah. There we go. So now the length of the machine is always important. Now the pasta is going to stretch, the dough is going to stretch all different ways. You know, it's going to stretch. So we have our one sheet ready to go. It's right here. Now you don't want them to sit too long, because if you do, they'll, um, they'll start drying out. Just so you don't miss some of the prep work while Chef's doing that here are my carrots. I, I peel fresh carrots to cut them into about one inch pieces just to get them cooked marginally even and then blanch them.
I'm going to fold it again. Try to get it square. For me? I think. I'm not used to this. While Chef's doing that, I put the carrots in this, uh, what is this thing called? The ninja? Ninja. Um, ninja. Any, any food processor will work. To tell you the truth, I use um, fresh vegetables because I personally believe they're more nutritious, but you could use an already frozen carrot. Um, and if you were really, really um, lazy, you could use carrot juice and call them carrot pasta. But... Um, the difference when you do carrot juice or any other kind of juice is that the colors aren't quite as intense. So the more of the carrot meat we can get into the flour, the more intense the color will be. So does that mean the um, flour is going to be a little sweet since carrot got a little sweetness to it? Well, and yes, and you know... And I would think so. No, but let me tell you why not. Because the, the fact of the matter is it's a, almost a, almost a three quarters of a pound. It is over three quarters of a pound of flour. And um, we're only going to put a um, quarter cup of carrot in it. So mm. it's, it's, there's really no, no so flavor. I don't, you know, yeah, it just it makes it color, right? And you, know, and, and you can use lots of vegetables. So if you did carrot, you've seen the tricolor, carrot, spinach, and tomato. Uh -huh. You know, you just, they sell them dry. And you can use all those. You could use, never mind, I'm going too far. Then I'll have nothing to talk about one of my tasks with the one. <laughs> so the, the hard part about using fresh carrots is getting them to puree properly. So if you had a juice extractor, you would, it would be... It would be good to you to peel and clean the carrots first, which you don't normally have to do when you're using an extractor, and then uh, and then extract the juice, and then take the carrot juice and the um, the pasty mush that's on the um, extruder side of the juice extractor, and put that back in. back on Okay, so we're almost there with these. We've got to go a couple more on number three. Okay. 
All right, so I have my three cups here. All right, so I'm gonna do fettuccine, Corbidel, and I'm gonna make a couple different cuts out of this last sheet. The, um, I don't want them to dry up too much, but I don't want them to stick either. So you gotta be real careful and you have to work fairly fast with this. All right, so uh, chef's changing the die for me. These are called dies, cutters, a lot of different names for them. So I'm gonna do, this will be the fettuccine. There's the squeak, Chef Blair. Oh yeah. <laughs> squeak, squeak, so I squeak. I let it go halfway through. <laughs> And then I just cut my hand like this. And don't need some elbow grease. Underneath. And I have my order of fettuccine right here. Can you guys see that? Yes. Yep. Let me move this a little more. Yeah, the management students, you guys can go now or you guys can stay? Because I know Chef Adam will be expecting you guys at 11.30 today, right? But you can stay until like the this 11.25 if you want. Okay, our second sheet we're going to make parpadel with. Now, I usually use a ruler and a, and a, uh, a straight edge cutter, with, but I'm going to use just the... Uh, Basically a pizza cutter right now, and I'm going to use my my uh, uh, bench scraper as a guide. So what you want to, when what you would like to do when you do this, you want to square off your sheet of pasta, okay? Take all the rough edges off it. You want it to look nice and even. When we do this, now all these extra pieces you could save and use them in a soup as a garnish for a soup. So if you could see right now, my my sheet is nice and square, rectangular. All right. So parpadel is usually about an inch, an inch thick. So I'm going to, I'm going to just use this as a guide. And I want to cut it. This is Porpadel right here. It's a thick. Thick pasta. See the thickness of it? Yeah. Right, so we, have our, we have our porpo dough. We have our fettuccine. And right, now we're gonna have a little fun with some other stuff. I'm gonna uh, cut this sheet in half. And right, I'm going to make bow ties or far, uh, farfalle out of one, and the other one I'm going to make tortellini. So this piece here, usually with a, a, a bow ties, they have a rigid edge, a, uh, a rigid edge. I don't have that cutter, but I'm just going to use my, my dough cutter right here. So you do the same thing. You even everything out. Even your sheet of pasta out. Now bow ties are usually one inch by two inches. So I'm gonna go across, one inch across.
Okay. I'm going to go two inches in width. You know, and I'm not being perfect with this, guys. All right. As you can see, I have these little rectangular patches right here. See them all? And what you do is you get them, you fold them in half, fold them in half, and then fold the outside pieces back. And you have a little bow tie. Fold them in half, and the outside pieces get folded back. Some people twist them. Some people just pinch them. Some people just grab them and go like this. And that's their bow tie. So now you got to remember, this is out of one brick of pasta. We're doing all this specialty stuff. Well, not specialty. I don't want to call it specialty, but all this, all these different pastas. Funny thing about pasta has always amazed me since I was knee high to a grasshopper is how much the shape of the pasta affects the flavor of the dish. That's true. Chef. When in fact it's all the same dough, boiled in all the same salted water. But but um but. Um, a farfalle tastes way different than a fettuccine, and both of them taste way, way different than angel hair or wheat. So. Now, listen, the shapes will look beautiful. It's like anything else. Whatever you put into it is what you get out of it. You put 100% into it, you're going to get 100% out of it. <coughs> okay, so now we have our bow ties. Can you see them on the ground? On the table, I mean. Yes, sir. Okay. How they look? They look all right? Yeah. All right, so now we have these three pastas right here. Okay, now we're not even halfway through the brick yet. All right, so I'm going to put them on the tray with the uh, gnocchi, and at the end, we'll show everything. So we have our parpadel. We have our fettuccine, our bow ties. All right, so, so far, this is what we have. Next, I'm going to do tortellini. Well, Chef, do you want to go? I thought you make the tortellini. All right. And, and, you know, I just need to I want to show you how powerful the pasta is. Go ahead. You I'm want to go? I never believe you until they taste it, that it tastes the same. So now when you do these, you want to have your table a little, a little flowered or a little semolina on it because these are going, guys, have you want to go? No, no, no. These are going to, you know, you're going to press these, you're going to move these around, they're going to stick. So I brought a couple different cutters up. I brought a square one and a round one. All right. So I'm going to start off with the square one. I go right to the corner and cut the piece I want to use. Nice square piece. All right. I'm going to use a round one over here on this side. I try to go as close as I can to the end, the last piece I cut, so I don't waste anything. And there's a reason I'm doing this. I'll explain that to you in one minute. So uh, we did an event here, a, uh, our Homco Scholarship Center. And um, we did uh, two different tortellinis. One of them had a meat stuffing and the other one had a vegetable stuffing. Actually, we stuffed it with samosas. So to keep the... Uh, to keep the uh, identification of them, I did two different shapes. One was triangular and folded, and which you're gonna see in a minute, and the other one was round and folded, and you'll see that in one second. So now listen, our stuffing here is mascarpone cheese. That's about two ounces. 
and I'm going to put, well, it's about an ounce, an ounce and a half. And I'm going to put a heaping tablespoon of Parmesan in it. Some salt, a little black pepper. Now, some people put egg in it. You know, you could add whatever you want, parsley, anything, lemon zest. I'm going to mix this all together. And this makes a nice little stuffing. The, the traditional stuffing is ricotta cheese or a meat mixed with some cheese and uh, seasonings, fresh herbs. All right, so I only made a very little bit because we don't need a lot. Look what we're stuffing. All right, so now I have my little stuffing here. So what I do is I'm gonna use two spoons to stuff it. You need less, you need the tip of the spoon. You need that much inside your stuffing. Okay. You don't want to overstuff them because that runs out the side. Chef Dan and Chef uh, Joe, who taught you guys how to make pasta? I learned here. Oh, you're the Italian that learned at the school? Come no, on, man. I'm playing around. I'm playing around. <laughs> I'm playing around. I learned my grandmother. I was her okay. gopher. So whatever she needed, she would okay. tell me to go get. She, if she needed the guitar, which the guitar is it strings across a wooden box. And you would go over it with the rolling pin and the pasta would fall. The sheets of pasta would turn yeah. into fettuccine or linguine, strands of linguine or fettuccine and fall through. And then just watching her is how I learned. So now you have to seal okay. these. Most people use egg. You know, you could use a little water. So you go halfway or all the way around. You fold it over. You seal it. Okay. Now we have a half moon. This is called an Angeloni. Close it. A lot of restaurants will serve that half moon. Yeah, because they're like, <laughs> excuse my friend. <coughs> okay, and that's a tortellini right here. Same here. Go around half moon. Close it up. Close it again. All right, and you just fold this part back. Now listen, we did these for uh, about 75 people in, in our little kitchen downstairs. Okay, they're the round tortellinis. Now these are the other ones. These are the rectangular or square. The shapes are similar. You, you, to make, you bring the two corners up. All right. You fold it over. This is like a triangoli. Same situation. You fold it this way and you get your point and you fold your point back. But the pointed ones, you know, is your specialty pasta that evening. You know, you might have a tortellini on your menu, a regular uh, regatta tortellini, and you might make a, a lamb tortellini for your special that night. There you go. And you can see that one's rounded and one has a point. The trick here is you gotta make sure they're sealed. If they're not sealed, <clears throat> If they're not sealed and they open up in your pasta water, it's a big problem. There you go, there's your tortellinis. They kind of look like dumplings. Okay, so we have two different tortellinis. The round, smaller ones. You would put probably for an appetizer about six of them, eight of them in a dish. And your bigger ones that are basically they look the same, but the point in the back shows you the difference. 
Is that better? Here you go. Yep. Good shot. I mean, if you want to see us, no. I don't want the big one. All right, let me just move this over. Okay. So, Chef, Chef Joe's up. Hey, want to throw any questions? All right, so let me ask everyone this. You saw the you saw the demo on the pastas. Okay. Do you figure this is worth it for you to make money in your restaurant? Do you think this is a big money maker? It's a little bit of work. Actually, it's a lot of work. Yeah. Okay, uh, let me ask you this. Out of one sheet, you saw me just do a half a sheet, and I got six tortellinis out of it. Out of one sheet, which is probably about, I want to say three ounces, I could get an order. Yeah, but that's time consuming. Eight orders, eight orders out, of a, out, of, out of a brick. Yeah. At twenty dollars, fifteen dollars an order, eighteen dollars an order, depending on with with uh, sauce or whatever I serve with. You know, anywhere from fifteen to twenty. So it's a money maker. So let me. I, I have questions now. How many? Uh, how many of you will, will you guys try this at home? I would. I would. Okay. You know I was uh, making it right now. <laughs> yeah, actually, um, I have a, I have a heart addiction, so I see pasta, I need to eat it. <laughs> yep. I uh, not ashamed to tell you, my fingers go in the bowl, pull out noodles, sprinkle a little salt, and just eat it. no sauce, no. So anyway, here's uh, here's my somewhat pureed carrots. And like I said, you can use frozen carrots. I use fresh carrots. And I use this um, little figamajig here to puree them a little bit. And do you remember how many uh, ounces of flour to ounces of liquid? I know it was about an hour ago, so you may have forgot. Anyway, <laughs> there's a half cup of carrots, which amount too close to a half a cup of liquid. And two eggs are in there right now. So then what did Chef put in his pasta? If I were done now, except for the flour, what other liquidy ingredient did he put in his pasta? I can't hear you, Anybody? Chef. Anybody going to guess or what? Say it again. I can't hear you, Chef. Okay. I asked what other liquidy type ingredient goes in the flour pasta mixture before it's blended up? Eggs and? Oil. Oil, right. And oil is fat, right? Yeah. Okay. And now, since you guys are in breakfast cookery also, what's that yellow thing in the center of the egg mostly? A yolk. Yeah. Uh, what's, it? what's it? Is it water or is it? Fudge. Fudge. No. <laughs> it's <I'm> fat. It. <laughs> egg whites have no fat. Anyway, the egg yolk has fat. So instead of putting oil in this pasta, because I want it to be mm -hmm. orange, I'm putting an extra yolk. Mm -hmm. I'm using the, because, because this little ninja thing is cute, but doesn't grind up the carrots so well, I use the liquid of the eggs to help um, puree the carrots better. There's no big deal depending on the type of pasta you're making. Um, I think, have you guys seen Chef Adam use the extruder yet? To make like rigatoni and those things? Mm -hmm. I think he showed us one time. That's good. And we'll get to play with that soon, which I'm going to talk to you after class about. Uh, but because we're using a sheeter, the pasta dough has to be a little bit more um, delicate and thinner than it would be if you know, can you hear it? Than it would be if you were using um, an extruder because the extruder actually makes a slightly 
a reasonably thicker noodle. So I'm going to take Chef's uh, food processor. I'm going to throw, for this recipe, I put two and a half cups of flour, about um, 12 ounces. Yeah, about 12 ounces. Uh, <clears throat> in the uh, ro in the robo coop, and um, I almost forgot a very important ingredient for me: about a pinch of salt. And then to that, I'm going to add instead of just eggs and oil, I'm going to add this pureed carrot mixture. And you guys said you can't you can see this sort of. Yeah? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, sir. Got to come closer to you. Get in front of you. So real quick, I just want to show you what this looks like because it's an amazing. The color, when it's finished, it, the color is so bright orange, it's just it's just pretty to look at, and then therefore people will think it's pretty to eat. Mm -hmm. uh, I, depending on the quantity you're making, you would probably do this on the table, which is a little easier. But this, the Robo Coop is a nice way to make it look pretty. And you see the orange color? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not white. You really can't see how orange it is on TV. I can. But, it, but it's um, perfect orange powder that when pressed together like Chef did with his and turned into a brick, It'll then sheet out nice. And you see how it's coming together again? Mm -hmm. Just a little bit of kneading is all it needs. <laughs> it's needy, aren't we all? It's becoming more and more needy as this uh, pandemic goes on. Well, I wasn't going to necessarily, I wasn't sure if I was going to make this today, guys, but I'm glad I did because now I have dinner. <laughs> so what were you... Serve it with, Chef. What will you? Oh, make thank you. With? I almost forgot that part. So there's, a, you can serve this with just about anything. Cream sauces. You can make a, you can make a, pasta salad out of the tricolors. You know, and it's nice. You've seen that a million times, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, but I personally, I personally am. I'm a, somebody in, tried to insult me the other day by saying I'm not a foodie. Well, that's not really an insult. I'm glad I'm not a foodie. But I eat simple foods. And one of the best sauces I know, very traditional Italian sauce, is um, uh, cheese and pepper. So it's just cheese and pepper, <laughs> literally, is what it translates into. And that's literally what you make when you get home from work after working a six, <laughs> after making a sixteen hour after working a sixteen hour day. You just literally get some pasta, boil it, you throw in some cheese and hot pepper, done deal. And that's dinner. There's a restaurant in town that, that serves it on their menu for an unbelievable price. I bought it because I wanted to see what theirs tasted. I but I couldn't believe I paid $28 for no. a small plate of noodles with grated cheese and hot pepper. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. So can you see how the, can you see the color? Yes, sir. It's, it's, that a, was bright fast. Mm -hmm. it's a bright orange. It's kind of nice. I guess next to the carrot, it doesn't look quite as bright, but anyway, that's, and you can do that with pureed spinach, broccoli, um, asparagus is healthy, and, but it has a strange flavor, and, um, so is it, is it, and the, the, other thing that, the other thing that um, people use off, that you use often and does have some flavor, because it's already concentrated, in a can of tomato paste. I meant to bring a small can of tomato paste, you know, like they sell in the supermarket, like we have downstairs for, I forget what dish we put the tomato paste in, but nobody uses a lot of it, so they're always small cans. But you could put that in the flour instead of, the, and then so you have the orange, the green, and red. Anyway, that's that whole story. So if you look nice. at this, it really didn't take us long to make these little bit of pasta. Yeah. Right, uh, we have, I have about three quarters of a pound of gnocchi dough and about three quarters of a pound of uh, plain pasta dough left over. Okay, mm. 
So these are the shapes. These will probably make these in your career somewhere for somebody or for yourself at home or for your own restaurant. Fettuccine is a good one. The sauce, sauce sticks to it really well. The tortellinis are the same. The stuffing in it could be whatever you have in the house. The bow ties is another pretty pasta. And it's a nice conversation piece also if you're making dinner for a few people. You say, yeah, I made these myself. It wasn't hard. This is how you do it. But as far as making money with these, these are 100% cash in your pocket for your restaurant. Right here, if we had to sell this right here, aside from the tortellinis, because we don't have enough, right here, we could probably get for the gnocchis. Once we cook these, these are going to blow up. So that would be a full order. Uh, the parpadel would be a full order. And these would be two half orders. So I'm thinking, let's say 12, another 12 is 24, 7 and 7, and nothing 14. So that's how much? $38, right? For a little bit of stuff that cost maybe two bucks to make. Yes, and that's not even accounting beats. Or the, or the other pasta, this, the carrot pasta. Anybody have any uh, ideas or questions? Or You know, there's so many stuffings for raviolis and tortellini. Tortellini, by the way, means a uh, little hat. I suppose to Italians, these look like hats. Yeah, the Pope's hat. Yeah, the Pope. If these were open, <laughs> see if I could open one. Here you go, you got the Pope's hat. Any questions or any, anything I can answer for you about pasta, possibly? Or at least we can look it up together if I don't know. Santino, will he eat any of that? <laughs> Probably well, not, right? Santino won't well, eat any of that, will he? Santino no. won't yeah, eat he, it. He, he ate fettuccine before. Uh, homemade fettuccine. He don't like. He don't like the store bought stuff. He likes all the homemade stuff. Oh wow, that's amazing. Yep. All right. So, so I'm I'm going to um, stop recording here. Uh, I need to um, clean my hands a little bit, and then I'd like to speak with all of you students before we go. Okay. Yep. I'm all assuming right. your silence is agreement. See you in a minute. <laughs>